Me and my brother, we come in the hot box. I told them I'm signing the deal. Yeah, they didn't believe me. I wanted to tell them they know that I'll keep it all real. Uh, after the diamonds, we come for the new shot. I swing off the line and I'm whipping the wheel. Chasing the money, she chasing what's coming. She know when she blow me that I'ma be coming. My girl lacing up like we wrecking the field. She know I be repping the shell. Uh, no one. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Movie Extra Podcast. Noah, introduce our special guest. Thank you, Dustin. Here we go. Back to the Movie Extra Podcast. We have the talented Harley Peets with us today as a special guest on the podcast. And we're going to let her talk about herself for a little bit and get to know her. Roll it. Awesome. So I am not used to being on this side of things. It's been a few years, but I'm enjoying doing a podcast that's not my own. Um, <laughs> and going backtrack into my history and back to, you know, how I started in that industry. So I think it's going to be fun. Absolutely fun. So much fun. Awesome. All right. So how we start movie uh, extra off uh, every week is we just bullshit about what's going on in the film and television industry. And something that just came out over a variety right now, actually, which is ca- kind of interesting uh roland uh emmerich the guy that did like independence day and all the disaster movies uh just said that marvel movies and star wars are ruining the industry a little bit i like how he also put in there a little bit (laughs) so he doesn't get in too much trouble Um, okay so it's uh, there are now more and more filmmakers and big time filmmakers uh coming out against these marvel and star wars movies and you know what as time's gone, as time has gone on, and I'm gonna get hate for this. I don't get me wrong. I love the MCU. I love Star Wars. Don't come after me. I mean, you can obviously tell that I'm into all this shit. But I gotta kind of agree. I think Hollywood has definitely. We aren't getting. Like, let's take 1994 that year in particular. Look at all the shit we got. Jurassic Park, Toy Story. Uh, just Forrest Gump, all the shit in the nineties. We're not getting shit like that no more. We are, we, I mean, we are just now getting thrown out a lot of IP content. So w- what do you guys think? Are you agreeing with all these filmmakers that are, is Marvel and star Wars and did DC universe? Are they ruining filmmaking right now? Like I'll let Harley go ahead and then I'll, I'll follow up after that. I think they are pushing a genre that doesn't need to be pushed and not that I don't love the movies. And certainly, you know, I have a household of people who have watched every single one of them, but you're right. There's not a lot else coming out that people are paying attention to and be that because the quality is not there because all the money's going towards these movies or because they just are being overlooked um i think they're out there if you dig but the big names are being tied up in these movies and you're not seeing um the multitude of other releases but i think that happens pretty consistently too because if you go back uh when you will see groups of movies coming out from different production companies that are all on the same same basic level but i feel like the last several years it's been the same so I'm going to take a little bit of a opposite direction. However, um, Roland Emmerich has no place. I don't know the guy. He has no place to talk about um, superhero big blockbuster movies. I mean, like when Scorsese says it, sure. But Roland Emmerich's movies are pretty much comic book movies without comic book characters. So Hollywood, it's been the same old story all the time. You know, we've got movies. Television is going to kill the movie industry. Right. You know, and then it was the streaming services are going to kill the movie industries. What I will say about the, the comic book genre and all of these films, this is keeping the movies alive. If you look at the pandemic, you look at the numbers like Spider-Man, um, No Way Home, a comic book movie is really the only reason that the, the whole industry survived pre-pandemic. So, yes, I get it as far as diluting the artistry. Um, however, it's, you know, keeping the theaters alive and it's just they're doing streaming services and two of course like disney plus but um yeah i think a little bit is jealousy and i would be jealous as well if i'm 
if my movies don't don't get viewed as as much as a Marvel movie and those movies seem to be cookie cutter. But however, you've got to maybe try a little bit harder to get, you know, your message to audiences. You, you've got to change with the times. And right now, the times is comic book movies, but it won't always be that. It'll be something else. So um, I like I don't know if there's old timers that are clinging on to a certain um, way things were, but. I don't know. I will say that the Marvel movies are getting a little bit too predictable. So I'm excited about us, you know, DC projects and more TV projects. But as far as ruining the movie industry, what a crazy hyperbole kind of thing to say. Roland Emmerich, you should be ashamed of yourself is what I'm saying. Gosh. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Spider-Man did save the film industry this year for sure. It sure did. Um, it's uh yeah because yeah, you know back in the day uh roland uh, especially his day after the, the day after tomorrow independence day these were the some of the biggest movies of the year and uh moonfall is already not doing well his newest movie and it's probably not going to do well and i'm sure he'll pull a ridley scott and blame it on millennials and you know ah oh, these combo movies are the reason no one's going to my shit and it's you know and what it comes down to honestly is in my opinion marketing they don't market yes. their movies anymore like the last duel ridley scott's newest film i didn't see a single piece of marketing for that movie <laughs> like, just one you, trailer yeah and you expect people to you know especially in a pandemic rush out to see your movie that no one knows about so it's yeah i don't know it's uh but i will say it's we're not getting as much as we used to for sure um true so yeah all right y'all um all right, so let's. Uh, that's really all that's going on today, by the way. <laughs> so let's uh, let's dive into our main topic. We are going to talk about set life, what it's like on a television set or a movie set. Uh, all of us uh, here in the podcast have been on sets, and uh, we thought it'd be cool just to talk about experiences and what it's like, just in case you're like, "Hey, I want to, you know, be a movie extra someday." But what's it going to be like? Well, we can tell you. Again, I'll defer to Harley if she wants to uh, go first and see your topic. So I was just gonna say most of my set experience is probably older and things have probably changed drastically. Um, you know, set life growing up in LA was of course the sets that everybody saw all the time. And I actually think it, people who get overly involved, they have to remember that knowing the sets is actually very distracting as a movie lover because you don't see the movies anymore. You see where they are, you see the lots, you see. <laughs> um, so it, it's a little disenchanting um, to, to look at a movie and know where they are as opposed to being lost in the movie. Well said. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I want to say the greatest surprise for myself personally about working on a set mm -hmm. is that uh, as a young person growing up in the 80s loving films just hearing about what it takes to be in the film industry you hear the word craft services and you think there's jokes <laughs> made about that that and you're like well you know I'm, I'm here I'm sort of nervous I'm on a movie set for the first time you know um, what's it going to be like what is this what's holding what are all these phrases but then there's a commonality that brings there's two commonalities really that brings every human being together and that one is music and the other one is food so having a Absolutely. display of wonderful food not just like chips and stuff and you have chips in between takes but when you sit down for meals those are good meals salmon um you know keto friendly options you know gluten-free options all of these great and they were awesome like i i ate some of the best meals of the year in 2021 on sets of a tv show it's so great it's what a surprise to me i'm like oh my god i'll do this just for the food well i like being the recognition obviously and and you know living a dream but the food is also huge up there for me man it's just so great and you know it puts everyone at ease yeah. like okay well oh there's food okay we well, are talking to other people so I, the craft services and i don't think the craft service folks get enough attention and love so if you're out there listening to this podcast or watching the video that comes out later and you're a craft service person thank you you know, somebody is right now is going to be listening to our podcast and they're going to be like, you know what? I actually get to go on a set tomorrow and uh, they get there and it's like Domino's pizza or like ham sandwiches. They're like, wait a minute, this isn't the best food ever. So just okay. to clarify, yeah. just That's to clarify, true. 
Uh, not all sets not every set. have craft services. So if you're on a big no, budget project from like Warner Brothers or Paramount, yeah, there's going to be craft services. But if you get on an indie picture, you could possibly be eating a ham sandwich from a gas station. So it's... So, <laughs> Wait, that's where the, I eat all my... The last, the last independent production I worked on in South Carolina, I had to start running to the store and buying literally bags of chips and cases of water because everybody was starving and the production crew did not remember to like deal with food. So I was running and grabbing. So no, it's not every production. It, it can be awful. Um, but yes, when you have some money behind it, the food is amazing. And that's where everybody lets their guard down and you get to have some of your better experiences. Oh yeah. Okay. And that's a key. Yeah. You know. Go ahead. I was gonna say, yeah, uh being on a big budgeted set, so like I'll use Warner Brothers as an example because me and Noah did some stuff this year with Warner Brothers. If you yeah, the craft services is the best time. It's all it's the biggest spread you've ever seen. And it's like steak, grilled salmon, like just all the pasta you can think of. And then you get to sit down with everybody on set who's there because they love film and that's what they y'all do and y'all just get to eat and bullshit about movies all day or well for that time period and it is the best time on set for sure like, what were you uh, gonna say uh, uh i was just gonna say too like the you know what the best tasting food is free food even if it's domino's <laughs> sandwich, you know that is the best the most tastiest food and if you're out there alert, uh, as a filmmaker a young filmmaker independent filmmaker use the examples we're talking about and feed your crew just feed them whatever it is so yep. going without is the worst thing water food whatever it is make sure they're well fed especially if they're doing it for imdb credit or you're doing it to network you know the least you can yeah. do is buy some folks some food oh yeah and it's, it's and don't be... don't don't knock uh oh sorry go ahead no you're good go ahead i was gonna say don't don't knock those dominoes nights either because let me tell you when you are um a starving artist working independent films and Domino's pizza is some of the best food you've had in a long time. So well, speaking of, I, so I told Noah this, the last independent <laughs> film I worked on a couple months back, I got to set and right when I got to set, my scenes were like right, uh, right after lunch. So I got to eat with everybody and it was literally 25 Domino's boxes lined up and that's what everyone ate <laughs> that day. So, oh and we did, we, because our scenes were right there where the pizza was so like when they were breaking down sets and changing things we'd all be just be over back over by the pizza just mowing down on pizza all day so yeah it's uh, a fun time and that's the cool thing you never know what you're gonna eat you, it's always different like it's always a surprise so yeah craft services food yeah. best time um Thumbs up. all right so let's talk about what uh, what it's like when it's uh, you get to a set uh you know, your call time 645, you get to set. What's it like? Well, we'll use a, a background extra, for example. What, what, you know, what, what was set like life when you get to set? So very exciting right away. So you go in and a lot of it is like, uh, hurry up and wait. That's, that's the main thing. That's the phrase everyone says, and it's true. So um, before I even get into this, if you're thinking about it, take some entertainment with you. Grab a book, grab something to read, because here's why in a little bit. So you get the set and you walk through. In today's day and age, unfortunately, there's an extra layer of protocol for for the uh, pandemic. So you go get your temperature checked. You go through all these different phases. You get checked in with the, the casting that you're there for the day. Then you go to uh, one of my favorite parts is wardrobe, because literally the set I was on, um, was in these large facilities, right? Like a like a, 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 a inner like a gymnasium or like a you know something that's not really made for. It's not the, an actual sort of dressing room area. And they put these like awesome looking tents up, right? So you walk in, you see a lot of uh, white tents. It's it, it's almost overwhelming. So you walk in for the first day, and then the people are like, no, yeah, yeah, that's you. And you're going through, and you see a bunch of people, and then all of a sudden they are normal folks, just like you and me. And they go inside a white tent and they come out and they're fucking movie characters. They're movie or TV characters. They go inside these white yes. tents dressed as like Joe and Schmo and these are accounted down the street. And hey, and they come back, church goer number five 
or plumber number six. Like literally, it's the coolest little transformational thing. Walk in this white tent and you're coming out dressed as a character. And then you're just all sitting as these characters. And you sometimes don't even know what that pertain. You, you came with an idea that you're gonna be in this costume, but you have no idea. You're not seeing the sides. You, you, not, you don't know what the scene involves. So like, it's such a cool like surprise, but everyone's dressed in odd clothing. If you put it in these terms, it's sort of a weird sort of experience, but my brain's weird and that's how I think and process things. Oh, no, it's definitely, uh, if you, especially if you work on a sci-fi movie, that's even the way oh. stranger. Everyone will get to set at the same time and be in normal clothing, and then everyone goes to wardrobe and makeup, and everyone comes out, and it's like, it's space aliens everywhere. <laughs> like, what just right. happened? And then, uh, and then, yeah, after wardrobe and hair, you usually go to holding room until you're called for your scenes, and that's when everyone's hanging out and stuff. And, and yeah, so definitely... Noah's right. Bring a book, bring something because sometimes your wait time can be like eight hours, 10 hours. It's uh, and one of the last projects I did this year, my longest wait time was eight hours because they had to redo scenes. Oh, wow. And so thank God I had my phone and I could play some of my phone games, but you know, <laughs> some of the wait times are pretty ridiculous. So Harley, what about set life from a crew perspective? So it's a little bit different, although I will say I have a couple of times done done the, um, you know, everybody getting dressed. Every, but I did a lot of like prop management. I did a lot of location scouting, um, things like that. So I didn't, I don't like usually like the front of the camera. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm usually on the other side. It is they're very long hours. You are there before everyone. You are there after everyone. Um, you, you find a chair to sleep in and nap when you're not needed. Um, <laughs> so, but you know, you don't usually have the downtime that you do uh, being an extra or waiting for scenes or things like that, because they're usually using you throughout the day. Um, scouting is a lot more fun. Scouting, you know, you're doing on your own time. And so you, you're not on anybody's schedule, but as far as um, technical work, it is very busy, very long hours. You hide the best you can. You don't usually do, um, do things with everybody else. So, um, and it depends on where you are. So if you're on a, like a big lot, a big set, uh, things are a lot smoother than if you're on location. True. So very it, it's very time consuming. It's very true. Yeah. Uh, we'll use PAs as an example. That's, they're the unsung heroes. Yeah. They don't get breaks. They are, you have a 12 hour day. They're literally working for 12 hours They're Well, I mean, they get breaks for lunch and stuff, but yeah, there, there's no downtime. There's uh, camera grips. Uh, yeah. So uh, extras and, and the actual actors are the ones that get the, get the downtime. So definitely not crew in uh, location. Yeah. <laughs> location that's that's a that's a pretty sweet job if anybody can ever do that that's where you're going out and you're finding the locations to shoot the films and uh yeah that would be a and they're much easier now to do than it used to be then because you were taking literal pictures of things and having to go get them developed and sending them off you know you didn't you couldn't like snap oh. a picture with your phone <laughs> and move on i mean we're talking about i was doing location scouting years ago um, and even still, until recently, they wanted to kind of physically see everything. And then, you, you know, you moved on to video, video work, and they wanted to see it that way. Um, I've not done any location scouting on the East Coast, um, and I've not looked into doing it. But I imagine doing stuff around here would be real fun to try to find places. Oh, yeah. For, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous down here. That would be a ton of fun. So party. So party, y'all, down here in the south, the Charles, the low country. It's gorgeous. Low country. Uh, yeah, that would be. Yeah, uh, speaking of uh, taking pictures, that's something else. So after you're done with wardrobe and you're, you know, you're in the holding area and then you get called to set, especially if you're an extra, uh, first thing you have to do is stand there and get your picture taken. And your picture gets sent to the director. Uh, and if they like what they see, you'll be called to set. And if they don't, you have to go fix something. So that's always fun. 
<laughs> change your shirt, change your pants, you know, change your face, you know, makeup, other things, you know. Um, I tell you, I've never been in special effects. Fe <laughs> Rewind that shit. Special <laughs> effects makeup. <laughs> That's the universal rewind sound. But I have, as you can see, I have some tattoos, right? You can kind of see that, right? Um, not a lot, not any big tattoos, but I've had to wear, I've uh, been in short sleeve shirt scenes and to watch a makeup artist in the makeup chair cover up such a large, like a fairly large tattoo is amazing. Like completely gone, completely vanishes. So whereas I've, I've got a little, you know, anti-shine on my face, you know, they, they do that in between takes, especially it's hot. The lights are hot. Charleston, South Carolina, if you're on the outside, it's hot. They don't want people glistening like a, like a ham on Christmas day, right? They don't want that. Um, so to watch the makeup artists like cover up tattoos and things, there was a wrestling scene in the rest, uh, Righteous Gemstone season two, this season here, they wanted real wrestlers in this scene. And this one gentleman, he was tatted from shoulder to asshole, all the way down, right? From his ankles to his uh, taint, everywhere, right? Um, wherever you can get a tattoo, this boy had tattoos. And it took a good hour and a half or so sitting in the makeup chair until every single tattoo was covered. And it was like he never had one before. So those folks are mega talented. And for me, a people watcher was such a cool thing. I had to like, you know, not constantly stare at the process because an hour and a half I had to walk around and stuff, but it was cool to watch. Um, and it was just fantastic. It was really, really interesting. Yeah, honestly, makeup's the one part of the whole process I don't like. I don't like wearing makeup and I don't like sitting there and having someone like do this to my face. And it's the one thing I don't like. So maybe that's why I want to stay behind the camera. <laughs> But you look so good in makeup, man. Why? Don't don't sell yourself short. Nah. Uh, I will say though, some See, of you guys get breaks being. Oh, oh no, you're good. I was gonna <laughs> say you guys get you know you get the advantage of like breaks and rests when you're filming. I don't have to wear makeup and I don't have to you know get lights in my eyes all day long. So I I think I still win. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh yes. Light. Oh man. That that. Yes. <laughs> Having lights in my face. I don't like that either. Um, but I will say some of the coolest conversations I've had on film sets were in the makeup chair. Uh, the makeup people, the uh, hair people, even wardrobe people. They are. They're just awesome. They seriously, the funnest people. Uh, yeah, definitely some of my favorite times. So, so great. Yeah. Tell your story real quick about, um, I don't know if you told it on episode one. And again, guys, we're all humans. Uh, we're telling fantastically fun stories and they may overlap some, but you know that you're here for it. You're here for the, the vibe. So uh, tell the folks about um, your wardrobe story about that one suit. Oh yeah. So on Righteous Gemstone season two, uh, one of the characters I play is a church goer and uh they put me in a corduroy brown suit and uh oh, no the, the wardrobe one of the wardrobe guys i can't i'm sorry i cannot remember his name off the top of my head i only worked with him the one day but he comes up to me after we're done and he's like you look fucking fantastic and uh i'm not gonna tell anybody if you want to you know take that suit home with you <laughs> awesome i'm like yeah what? is it really a set if you don't take something with you <laughs> right <laughs> That's another great topic right there. Uh, yeah, usually. Oh, we, I'm sure I have a box of yeah. things that have walked away. I definitely do. We, yeah, definitely. Uh, I did not take that suit home though, uh, because that, uh, yeah, that would have been awkward getting butt. Like, hey, uh, you need to take that back. <laughs> so, no, oh, I, I, I forgot. Whoops, um, I didn't. I forgot I was wearing a suit. No, <laughs> but it was just, just the way he said it to me. Like, I had just stepped back into the wardrobe room. He's like. You look fucking fantastic. <laughs> like that's makes awesome. you feel good. All right, awesome. <laughs> like, that's that's uh, great to know. <laughs> so, but now I did not. Uh, you know what? I don't think. I don't think I took anything from Righteous Gemstones. That I, I didn't have to go back for another season. Uh, yeah, yeah, go. we are doing a season three, so I'll have to uh, hope nobody's listening. <laughs> No, I'm scalping everything. Everyone's <laughs> listening. Uh, I'm uh, not going to take any. All of it. Roughhouse Pictures is listening. <laughs> yeah, Danny McBride himself is listening. Um, I was, I never, I never took anything from the set either. I was gifted everything. Right. Oh, gifted. that's not true. Uh, well, it's not actually. It's not stealing anything. So 
one I, another character I played was a protester, and I actually had to wear my own clothing in that scene. So technically, <laughs> but right? I'm not stealing there you go. my stuff, and uh, yeah, and every now and then, y'all, if you're gonna be an extra, especially sometimes. And it doesn't matter what the studio, you might have to bring your own shit, <laughs> which blew my mind. Cause I had done indie work. I've before. never not had to. Well, so yes. Yeah, I'm used to doing indie work and we always have to bring our own clothes. And I get my first time being on a big studio uh, thing. I'm like, wait, I still have to bring my own shit. <laughs> You're a billion dollar studio. <laughs> Why do I have to bring? All right. <laughs> And, and they're for making me, up for I, the people of, of stuff walking off set <laughs> that's right absolutely i was yeah, just literally gonna something. say that. steal your own shit <laughs> um I, most of my scenes in the righteous gemstones were my own clothing minus like i think that a costumer costume uh wardrobe person um let's say the right thing wardrobe person right so sometimes they're like you know what i have to do something so literally one time uh it was just a tie it's like, your suit looks fantastic, your socks, your shoes, but here's a tie. Even though I had a nice tie on, they're like, I got to give this guy something. He can't just wear his entire outfit. So everyone else has big zipped bags, garment bags of like full suits and different options. And um, I'm turning mine into a different uh, wardrobe person than I got it from. And I'm just literally just, it's just one tie inside a garment bag. And she's looking at me, he's like, take the rest off and I'm no no this is my stuff and you, they have tags and a filing system and like yeah. oh okay yeah thank, thank you sir uh, everyone else has just turned in so much clothes and here I am with just a hanger with a tie on it and um you know yeah, I could have taken that tie for sure you're a suit guy so I'm not I don't I, I own one suit maybe two so yeah, I definitely, when I got to set, I was like, y'all got to have a suit for me because uh, this ain't happening if I don't have a suit. <laughs> and he had the perfect corduroy suit for you and it could have been yours and you could have been a suit guy after that. He sure did. He sure did. Um, so yeah, that's wardrobe, craft services, makeup. Um, so let's talk about when you actually get into a scene. Uh, how amazing that is. Do uh, you guys have any stories? I defer to Harley on this if she wants to talk next. So I don't have a lot of, again, because I'm not in front of the camera, I don't have a lot of scene stories. Um, I have had a lot of experience with having to move people that don't want to be moved, be, mostly because when I did it, I was much younger. And it's very hard when you are like a teenager and early 20s and you're telling you know, these, these adults in their 40s and 50s that have been doing film for 30 years, hey, you're in the wrong spot. And really, that that's the most as I have. I don't have a lot of in mid-scene stories because most of my stuff was, I wasn't on the stage during the scene. I'm somewhere else. You know, I'm running to find props for the next scene. I didn't get to see a lot of the filming. Uh, I'll say this is one thing that um, it's, it's really funny and a lot of us experience on, on set. Uh, we refer to it as an extra freak out. You know what I'm talking about, Noah? Oh, right. yeah. So what an extra freak out is, is when you're on set, you're doing a scene and someone who's never been an extra before, they have no idea what the process is. It's their first time. They get on set and they see like Tom Cruise. Okay. T Tom Cruise comes out huh. on set. They freak out, will run up to said actor, and it's, we call it an extra. Never be on set out. again. And yep, you're immediately, yeah, if you're listening to this and you want to be an extra, you will be immediately removed from sets and you will not, it's going to be hard to come back. Well, you're not coming back to that set, but I mean, don't, you don't want to get blacklisted in this industry. No. <laughs> so. And it's easy to do. So, oh, yes. Uh, now I've, I haven't seen it a whole lot, but I've seen a couple extra freakouts, and I'm not gonna lie, it's really hard to not bust out laughing <laughs> when it happens. <laughs> well, you should next that time was, ridicule yeah, them. That yeah. was always hard for me to watch. Um, and you're right, it does happen, and I've seen it happen. I saw it happen more um, music industry side than I did on um, movie side. I didn't spend a lot of time, you know, but I was on a lot of music video sets and things like that. And it still happens. And you're just like, you knew what you were coming to. Why is this a surprise? Yep. <laughs> yeah. 
folks get overwhelmed. It's the same thing when you see old concert footage of like, you know, people at Michael Jackson concerts and they're just literally, they're all the life leaving their body. They're so excited, their body can't mm-hmm. control it anymore and they're just like flopping down. Um, so I would say, so I had one moment where, so if you're an extra um, and you want, okay, you want to be seen, obviously, right? We're all humans here. You know, we, we want to be recognized. We want to be seen some more than others, me, myself, all of it. Give me the fucking spotlight as much as I can take it. I you don't can care. Have it. Have all of it. Give me, right? It's just the way I am. I'm Scorpio. I love, I'm just a weirdo, dude. So I, in scenes, they sort of tell you, they kind of give you a little bit of direction. So if you're in a church scene, um, and I was, you know, trying to get as much screen time and camera time as possible, well, you try to do, you know, something to at least get your, yourself noticed. So, um, you know, they're like, hey, let's do a praise scene, for example. So they're like, you know, something's happening on stage, your reaction. So you sometimes, you know, you praise and everyone's going like this and you're doing a bunch of stuff. And I was like really going for it. I was like, oh, I was like almost like paint, like passing out and doing all this stuff. <gasps> Jesus. Right. And then the director actually said, uh, you in the blue shirt, uh, blue suit, uh, just take it down a little bit. I'm like, oh, OK. So then I'm like, praise, praise him and hey, Jesus. But the rest of the time after that, I'm like, I'm just going to go back to being this full character as possible um and the, and the second thing is there's not a lot of pe- places that you find just strangers asleep and we were talking about sleeping earlier so it never you know i guess if you're in if you're in um like the subway in new york or places you can probably see folks sleeping on the subway but i don't know i found it immediately fascinating that in those eight hours of time like people were sleep, sleeping on tables sleeping on the floor, sleeping uh, everywhere. And it's just human beings. We don't see a lot of other human beings just asleep in public, um, which was hilarious. I'm like, that's a very inventive way. Some person had slept, they were sleeping some sideways upside a wall some way. I'm like, how are you even doing that? And I wanted to wake them up, but then these, you know, then I wouldn't have had a good story. Uh, but yeah, so just the, the human aspect of the whole industry uh, is cool. Cause you're gonna meet cool, weird humans even the folks that freak out when they shouldn't because they know that tom cruise is going to be on set yeah no hey, I- i'm not gonna lie i have definitely tied two two chairs together with a jacket and used it as a bed <laughs> yeah, chair hammock done that's smart that's that's yeah that's easy, easy My yes. thing, what i do because i've 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 slept on sets before and what i do is Usually when you come to set, you bring your suitcase with you that's got your stuff in it. And what I'll do is I'll prop that up and use that as a pillow and I'll just sleep on the floor (laughs) wherever I'm at. Because, yeah, sometimes you do have to wait eight hours in between sets and you just take a nap. (laughs) Just know just know that we're on the set. I'm that weird dude just watching you sleep. Right. Oh, look at him. Look at him sleeping. Look at her. Look at that old person. You're sleeping away. What are they dreaming about? You reckon? And that's what I'm thinking. You know, those kind of things. I try to stay awake. Because something's going to happen. Because as soon as they say, hey, we're going to set now, my ass is up off that chair and I'm first in line because I want to be right there, right there in the front. So I got to say, on smaller projects where there's like maybe 10 of us, I I sleep a lot easier. But when it's, when there's 200 extras around, it's a bit nerve wracking to be like, all right, somebody's going to mess with me. (laughs) Someone's going to steal my shit. No, I'm just kidding. Nobody does that. But yeah, it's, uh, it can be nerve wracking when there's 200 people (laughs) around you. So yeah, it's, yeah. So that's, uh, that's set life. Uh, (laughs) So uh, you guys want to talk about anything else when it comes to set life? Did I miss anything? Strangest place you've ever had to film. Ooh. Ooh, strangest place. Uh, hmm. Uh, I filmed in a boxing gym, uh, a coliseum, uh, the woods. Um, uh, I don't know. Like, not. You know, I'll say this: I have never filmed on an actual uh, studio lot in LA. Okay. I, I everything I've done has been on a location somewhere around the United States. Never, yep, never been on. I've never been, I've drove past the Warner's lot, but I've never been on it. Oh, so, okay. Most people do walk, drive past the Warner's lot so they can go see the tower. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that's, seeing the tower and even seeing the Hollywood sign for the first time just like took my breath away. 
So yeah. Well, the Animaniacs, they live in that tower. So they can open that door anytime. They do live in that tower. Hey, what about you, you gotta, like just hope you drive by the weirdest place. Mm-hmm. Um I have filmed, let's see, in a dance studio that was full of mirrors, and it's very difficult to hide mirrors. Um but the weirdest place was actually not even a production I was a part of. The strangest production to watch was actually when I was in middle school, because my middle school was used for filming constantly. Um, and it was very weird to like watch the places you walk past be taped off to be like, you can't come here for the next hour. You can't come here for the, um, they regularly did, oh, what was the name of it? Come on, 90s, uh, Seventh Heaven was always filmed at my school um and so we regularly couldn't walk into this that and the other place um movie with john travolta as a like president i can't think of it offhand primary colors yeah okay so our school library was closed for like three weeks so but anything that happened in that school was, was definitely a strange experience that I've held on to and I wasn't part of any of it. I mean, I might have been because they used to film the kids walking around, but you know, that's free extras. <laughs> you yeah. don't have to. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah. Same thing happened when I was in high school. So uh, I went to Walterboro. Uh, I grew up in Walterboro, South Carolina, and our entire town was taken over uh, for the movie Radio with Cuban Gooding Jr., Ed Harris. Okay, uh, yeah. The entire movie was filmed in our town. Uh, it's, it's, so it's based in Anderson, South Carolina, the real story of radio. But uh, Walterboro hasn't changed since the 1950s and 60s. So because of that, they filmed it all here. And yeah, our entire town mm -hmm. for three months was absolutely insane. <laughs> you couldn't go anywhere. Like. It, it was nuts. And uh, the entire town, they brought in the entire town to be the extras. So all of us were in that movie and it was absolutely insane. So that's, that's my uh, story, I guess. <laughs> for, for See, me. Those are always the weirdest. Right. Yeah, those are the weirdest. Yeah. For, for me, mine was on the, this most recent season of Righteous Gemstones. So the, the, the scene description just said baptism. BJ's baptism and it's not a spoiler it kind of is if you've not seen the season that, that's on HBO right now if you're not uh, pause this podcast right now go watch all the episodes come back because here we go <clears throat> so uh, where it was filmed was just so we pull up to the side of the road and we see the large tent we're like okay are we gonna film outside it's a, a gigantic tent we, we all get inside and right by the tent is um, like a like a porno video slash um dildo store what do you call those sex stores anyway if you're also kids adult shops at this point. yes adult store right you can get your wieners and your videos right there at the store and then there's like some <laughs> some cars parked in front of it i'm like this is definitely a set it's a, a rough house picture uh -huh. show it's danny mcbride i get to be an extra at a baptism of course the, the righteous gemstones are going to have a baptism in a porno place right but then they're like okay walk the set i'm like oh I maybe shouldn't have assumed that I would be filming a baptism inside a porn store. But so we walk a little bit further because the only other thing in, as far as I can see are these warehouse buildings, like refrigeration buildings, guys are coming in and out and they're like load pallets on trucks. Mm -hmm. But we walk into a steel building, an absolute just steel building. And as soon as you walk inside, the set design was would blow you fucking away. Like it was the baptism. And it was so cool to see that built in some sort of just prefab warehouse building just for the three days to all be taken down. That's the cool thing too. It's like, it's yeah. just all gonna be taken down. Literally walked over a mud puddle, waving bye-bye to the porn store, right into the side of a warehouse, past a couple box trucks. And there all of a sudden we're onto a immaculate baptism set. Uh, it was so cool. Yeah, they'll, Hollywood, th these studios, man, they'll build entire towns and, just for their movie and then they'll tear them down. It's pretty, speaking of radio again with Walter Burl, so the, uh, our football team was the Bulldogs and their team in the movie was the Hornets. So they had to literally redo all of our stadium. They had to redo our high school. So they painted over everything as the Hornets. And then before they left, they had to put everything back to the way it was. <laughs> so you're talking days worth of work just to oh, yeah. alter. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's 
or they'll build entire houses for sets and then sometimes leave them tear them down whatever it's yeah it's crazy awesome that's awesome um you know well um we have you know harley's a special guest on the the episode um i know you did an introduction earlier harley is there anything that you're working on personally maybe it's not even in hollywood but in the entertainment multimedia video field that you would like to talk about yeah. real quick yeah i mean we can do it real quick i have it I'm, i don't know how visible my sign is behind me um but i am i'm working on developing um videos and a podcast for real estate um first locally then we're uh, i'm you know gonna work on taking it nationally and it's not so much for entertainment purposes as it is for educational purposes but it's kind of how i've dipped my foot back in um with with still maintaining um my professional knowledge base because I'm just not in a place where I can jump back into uh, film and theater and things like that, uh, because I just don't have the time and energy to dedicate to it anymore. But this has become my baby and I have super enjoyed um, kind of building that and building the relationships associated with it because it is amazing the stories that people have to tell. And that is what I have been going after is yeah, real estate is what it is. I mean, it doesn't change that much, although the market itself changes, but these stories that people have to say, the, the professionals that come into the field are all from different backgrounds, just like they are, you know, in the movies. And it, it's just, I love hearing people's stories and where they came from and why. And so that is, that is where I am headed. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, y'all. Well, that is this week's episode of Movie Extra. Remember, uh, stay tuned, and uh, episode the episode will be out released on Friday, and then you'll get to see the live version on our YouTube at Cloudy Sky Entertainment on Monday. So y'all keep being awesome, and we will see you next week. <laughs>